Hey all, I thought I'd bring you back in to the shop today. Turn on the camera. I'm going to be working here anyway, so if you want to see what I'm going to be doing, uh, you're welcome to uh, stick with me, stick with the video. If not, that's fine too. Okay, so this is what I've been working on. And apologies if you can hear the mill in the background. I am warming it up to do some more milling for this, for this fixture plate. I have made a fixture plate for my fly press, okay? Um, I've got it uh, tapped for 3 8 16 thread so that I can use my existing clamp kit, all right? to clamp my work down, and more importantly, to cl clamp my fixtures down. So this is where a CNC mill really helps. Um, this is some pretty dirty milling. I didn't face or contour or anything. I just took a piece of almost one inch thick steel. It was about seven eighths of an inch thick, a little bit uh, thicker than that. About eight by, sorry, eight by, what is this? 12 piece of steel. And I spotted it, drilled it, and tapped it for this 3816. Okay? There are, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 times 4, 24 bolts top and bottom for clamping. And then the center portion, there are four more tapped for holding some of these um, bottom dies, like this one. This will go here in the, in the center, right here, okay? This one I milled yesterday uh, to, to accept this, this punch, okay? Let's just say it's about 3 16 inch, a quarter inch by 3 quarter inch, whatever. It was designed to, to accept this so that I could do one and done punching right here. If you're interested in, in seeing more of these mill jobs, uh, I can I can I can show more footage, um, but basically I took a block of 4140, all right, cut it to length, it's about 102 millimeters, faced it, milled it, contoured it, milled in these fit features, okay, and then I tapped it for M8 thread. Now these four these four bolts I tapped them M8, well because I have a lot of M8 hardware and I have a really nice M8 uh, tap. Uh, that's why I chose that, okay? But the reason I have that there is for, mainly so I can put little stripper bars here so that if I'm, let's say I'm doing a low profile uh, punch or, or, or sorry, a low profile bottle cap opener or even a bottle, bottle uh, railroad spike bottle opener I can have a little piece of metal screwed in here, come across, okay, slide my, my stock under there, and then when I retract that fly press, if, that, if this punch is stuck in that material, it'll hold on that stripper clip or that plate, and then that punch will come out and, and I'll be able to retrieve my material. Now on the, on the flip side, I, I went ahead and flipped this part, faced it, finished the contour, milled in these these grooves so I had a little bit of flexibility, okay? And then I, I milled in a recess here. Now that recess, what's that for? Well, I don't have a hole in this fixture plate here. So nothing's gonna fall out the bottom. I did that on purpose. This, this recess here is gonna be able to house or hold a bunch of those, whatever's left over from, from that punching operation. And it's usually not that much material. I don't, well, it's usually about, about that big focus. All right. Not a lot of material comes out, but it'll just hold it there. And then when I'm done, I can loosen these bolts out, pull this bottom uh, die out, and then just dispose of those clips. The reason I don't have a hole here for the punching is because I also plan on making a fence, all right, an adjustable fence here so that I can run stock along that fence. Let's say I want to put in a decorative line all the way down that stock. I'll be able to have that as a guide and run it and then be able to repeat. I haven't been able to do that in the past, but again, that's the beauty of this fixture plate. Today's work, 
if you're going to stick with me. I need to I need to extend these these two grooves. I need to bring them in closer to the center. I don't have as much play as I want to to line up this. I'm off just a little bit. So I'm going to do that. I also have so I, I have this I had this really great recipe came up with a really nice diamond pattern for this face. It's nice and shiny, but it's almost like the face of a really high end putter. Okay. A little bit of texture there. I like it. I think that'll, it, it's not so much texture that'll impart to the, the, what I'm forging, but I think it's enough that maybe it'll hold, it'll be a little sticky. It'll hold it in place. <laughs> Probably not, but we'll see. I'm still working on my feeds and speeds for my face mill. Um, I've gone ahead and I rotated the inserts and I've indicated them to make sure they're all centered, but I'm going to try a new recipe. I'm going to slow down my speed and see if I can get more of a uniform finish, less of the diamond pattern, more of a flat pattern. So I'm going to reface this. I'm going to bring that in and then I'm going to heat treat this baby. All right. A bit tricky to pick up this backside again, but what I'm going to do is going to probe the model in Z and then I'm going to probe that bore where it's hovering right now. That is the plan. Wish me luck. All right. Probing in Z looks good. I think that stylus will fit down in that hole. That's what I did when I flipped it in the first place. I'll be honest. I didn't get a good zero off this when I initially milled the part. Sometimes this probe isn't consistent. We'll see how this one does. Okay, that's probed. Let's go ahead and face this bad boy. All right, y'all, the proof is in the pudding. So here's the face, this diamond pattern. I really, really like actually. It's nice and sharp. I love how you can do that with face mills. So I slowed down to about seven thou per tooth. Don't remember what that is in, in millimeters. And it's a little less, but, but not, uh, not smooth. I thought I would be closer to smooth, but I'll keep working with it. 4140 can get a little gummy. So you got to really, well, in my experience, limited as it is, I've got to take a healthy, a healthy depth of cut. And this, this is the smallest depth of cut. I think I can get away with, which is about 10 thou or 0.254 millimeters. So this is the bottom. And before this was these, these two holes were two, they didn't, these two slots didn't go in far enough. Okay. They were far enough for, but I didn't have play for these, for those, uh, three eighths by 16 bolt holds. So let's, let's take a look and see if I've got enough play now. 
So this will rest in here. This is still loose. Yep, you don't see the other side, but I have got a lot of play. So I can line this up just perfectly. Now, before I bugger up this, this face, let's turn the heat treat oven on and get this, this baby hard. But before we do that, I'm curious. Let's, I'm going to get out the files and see, see, uh, I mean, it's probably softer than 40 Rockwell, but let's, let's see what the files say. And then we'll compare after I harden it. So these are the files I'm using. Hardness tester, hardness Rockwell 40 to 65. Now, if you've never used these before, it's an, inter it's an interesting th thing. It's, for me anyway, it's not only the evidence of a scratch that I see, but it's really in the feel. The feel of how much is this digging in? So, generally, I would, one would start with 65 and work its way down to, down to 40. This should be, well, softer than 40 already. Yeah. For example, let's just start with 50. That should dig in quite a bit. This is the top, so I don't want to mar that too much. I'll just mar the bottom right about he here. And I can feel that digging in and dragging. Okay, so it's definitely softer than 50. Let's go to 45. Wow. Okay, definitely does not bite as much. Okay, but it's still digging in pretty good. What I want to feel is it's skating. Okay, it's starting to skate, but it's still a little bit softer than 40. But honestly, if I had a really smooth spot, let me get on the side here. Yeah, just barely starting to skate. So my goal okay this is going to harden i'll have to look at the at the sheet again but after it's it's hardened i want to temper it back down to a 50 or 45. okay i don't want it to be super hard working in here but hard enough to act um you know as a bottom die as a bolster or as whatever you you want but to let me um be somewhat durable and let me punch bottle openers. All right, over to the oven. I'm using an even heat oven. It's about 18 inches in depth. Um, this is actually a, a blade fixture, but I, I pulled the dowels out and I use it just to heat treat a lot of my coin dies that I make. Uh, that way I'm hoping to not wear out the floor of this kiln prematurely. So this little bit of ceramic or whatever that is, it's kind of a fail safe for me, but it's been a good, it's been a great little oven. Okay. I've already programmed in here. In fact, we can take a look. I've already programmed all of my, my little recipes here. We've got a 4140 hardening, 4140 tempered, a 45 Rockwell. And I got that recipe offline, oh, excuse me, online on the interwebs. Uh, let's see here. What else do I have on here? 52100. I've had a lot of great luck with 52100. Uh, most of the co most of, if not all of my co uh, coin dies are made out of 52100. They are, it is a really great steel to work with. Got A1, H13, S7. Those are the, the metals that I've worked with and have, and have had luck with. So 4140, this is what we're gonna do. Let's see if I can, let's see, schedule summary. Whoops, that's temper. Hardening, so basically, it's going to heat up as fast as possible to 1300 and normalize, then it's gonna heat up to 1550 degrees and hold for 45 minutes. That's my recipe. Then I'm gonna oil quench it. And then for my temper, I'm gonna heat it up to 800 and hold it for two hours. Okay, then I'm gonna pull it out and uh, let it come to room temperature. That's what I'm going to do. We'll see how it goes and then we'll, we'll test it again with the files and see how hard it is.
but it's been quenched in oil. So let's, I've polished up one side here. Now everybody cross their fingers because my battery is about to die in this camera. Let's hope it, it survives this long. Okay, so I've got the 65. Let's test that. Ooh, that almost skates. That doesn't dig in very well. Let's see the next one, 60. 55. Ooh, starting to skate. 50. Oh, 50 has no purchase. Let's go back to 55. Ah, oh, just barely skates or barely digs in. And then 50, nothing. Okay, so this is somewhere between 50 and 55 in my, in my estimation, in my back, <laughs> backyard shop opinion. Uh, regardless, it's, it's still warm, but I can touch it kind of like something warm out of the oven. I'm going to put it back in for the temper and we're shooting for a 45. Meet you on the other side. So I got this thing tempered two hours in the oven and I even made dinner while I, while I waited. So once again, I'm going to test this. I'm going to start with 55 and work my way down to 40. And again, hopefully I want to be still within 50 and 45. So let's see how this works. So 55 definitely bites. Now we're going to do 50. Whoop. 50 skates. 45 should skate as well. Well, she sets hard. Okay. Again, 55. Clearly bites. I can hear it and I can see it and I can feel it. And 50. Nothing. So it's 50. That's okay. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in again. Really appreciate it. I'm really excited to put this to good use. I had wanted to heat up some metal <clears throat> and test it out, but first I'm going to make, I have an idea how to do this. First, I'm going to fab up a stripper bar. <laughs> I guess I can't say that a stripper bar, a stripper pole. No, first I'm going to, I, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have washers, let's say, or spacers. Okay. Uh, with a nine mil hole to clear that eight mil uh, bolt that'll go in here. And depending on how thick my stock is, I can adjust this stripper bar <laughs> that goes over here. So my stock can go under here. I can punch the hole. I can retract the punch and this will, this bar will stop the stock from going up and then I can pull my stock out. So that's the plan. Anyway, we'll put it to use on a future video. Take care. Bye.